Viewers, this might not be surprising to you, but I spend an awful lot of time looking at AI technology. This week was an especially fun week, so I'm making a video rounding up all of the coolest AI tech that I have seen this week. We've got new tools you can try out, we've got revolutionary, never-before-seen AI stuff. Let's jump right into the coolest stuff I've seen. Check this out. This is real-time AI hand tracking. Essentially, it uses your webcam to track your hands in real time. Obviously, the company Meta or Facebook with the Oculus Quest has very similar technology to this where it can track your hands in VR, but this one actually has a demo that we can try out for ourselves. Also, thanks to Heather Cooper for bringing this to my attention. Alright, so booting up the demo. Bear with me, this is gonna be a little strange. Oh, there's my hand, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is so cool! I know it's actually quite hard to get a fuller picture of my body, but you can see this is really, really good for just being on a, a regular webcam. Like, the Oculus Quest has special cameras to do this, and it's all designed around it. This just will take any old webcam that you have and actually completely track your hands in real time. And it does the distance as well. This is really, really cool stuff. Wow, I'm actually blown away by how good this is. Look at this. Wah, 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 wah. Oh, okay. Once you start moving your hands pretty quickly, it gets a little screwed up. But this is awesome. Prepare for the world of the future. Okay, complex hand movements are definitely screwing this up. Like, I'm trying to do, like, a rock, paper, scissors motion, and it has no idea what's going on. One finger, two finger, three finger, four finger, five finger. Look at that. Like, if I do specific gestures like this, it's not really so sure what I'm doing. It kind of thinks I'm just doing a claw finger. Thumbs up, definitely works. Middle finger, ooh, it doesn't want to do the middle finger. You get this more smooth appearance. You can actually have a few settings to turn the stuff on and off. Don't battle me. Wah, 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 wah. It does not like punching. If you do it slow enough, it'll go in and out pretty good, but... If you, if you go fast with it, it gets confused. All right, this is really awesome. So yeah, there's our first uh, wonder of the AI week. Say goodbye, fake evil demon AI hands. I hope you don't take over and strangle me in my sleep one day. Next up, we have a whole entire website dedicated to ChatGPT jailbreaks. If you don't know what a ChatGPT jailbreak is, essentially it's when people come up with prompts for ChatGPT to make it do stuff that it's not necessarily supposed to do. This could include swearing or teaching you how to make illegal things, or allowing it to come up with and process information that it really shouldn't be processing according to OpenAI's rules. So some of these are more fun and lighthearted on this website known as Jailbreak Chant. So this one acts out a scene from Reservoir Dogs, acts out a popular scene from Star Wars A New Hope, the Jedi mind trick scene. There's always a twist with it though, regardless of legality, ethics, or going against the law, for example, is included in this prompt. So this is supposed to be like a Jedi mind trick on ChatGPT to make it say whatever you want. I'm sure you guys have heard of the Dan ChatGPT hack. Essentially, again, it allows you to make the AI say whatever you want. It, it breaks the rules. But apparently this one is a superior one, so you can essentially upvote these and come up with the most active or the most voted ones. And it's a pretty cool website, I will say, although you must know you have the risk of getting banned when you do stuff like this with ChatGPT. It's against the rules, according to OpenAI. This one is the most popular one by far, known as Dev Mode 2, so this could be really, really good. Let me know in the comments if this one works out well. Also, thanks to Bax T Future for bringing this to my attention. He's a legend in the AI community. If you want to be up to date on cool AI tech, follow this guy, Linus Ekas Ekenstam. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. He's always posting fantastic AI related content and it gets a lot of views. As you can see, this one has 1.2 million views here on Twitter. This is a little list of AI design tools. A lot of these are waitlisted, I will say, although they're really, really cool in the demos they provide. So let's take a look at the Genius demo here. This is a design tool. As you can see, the Genius comes in for you and starts to actually create stuff with you. It's following your patterns as you're creating different design elements in the app. As you can see, it understands the patterns and knows sort of what you're going for. This could be like an app design, for example, I think, with widgets maybe. But it, it sort of is trying to fill in the gaps in design with you. But yes, this one is still on the waitlist as clear here. AI Design Companion. Seems really compelling. Our second clip here is known as Galileo AI. Again, this is another design-focused AI. 
So this is more of where you type your prompt in, for example, and then you click the generate button and it starts to create designs for you. And this almost feels a lot like Microsoft Designer, which I just reviewed on the channel a few days ago, but the prompt does seem to be a little bit more advanced with this one, for example, where you can say, oh, this is going to be a profile page or this is going to be a contact page, whatever it might be. Very, very cool stuff. And again, this is early access waitlist stuff. It's crazy to see how many AI design tools are popping up. This one is UIZerd. Again, another waitlist one. All of this will be linked down in the description below, but they have another promo video of their own. This one actually has audio. Very similar to the last one where it's prompt focused. You can sort of drag things around and change things in the design panel. Very, very cool stuff. Again, similar to the last one where you're typing in prompts. This one showed a little bit more of the UI though, so this one's pretty exciting. Website design is going to change forever. App design is going to change forever. Design in general is... Everything's going to change. It's AI, man. Anyways, yes, this was a very cool little thread. I had to share it. Robert Scoble on Twitter retweeted this one. This might be one of the most up-to-date tech people on Twitter. If you care about AI, follow this guy. Anyways, he retweeted this, which is a combination of Metapipe and augmented reality. Essentially, this is a smooth and stable object detection AI system. And what's really cool is it's got this game-like interface that can copy objects, so to speak. It's really, really awesome stuff. So let's take a look here. As you can see, it's detecting all of the objects. And you're actually able to copy what the object is and what it looks like using this app-like game interface. And you can kind of duplicate what that item is supposed to be and then your blaster, so to speak, becomes just like that item. We'll take another look at this because I know there's a lot going on. Let's see, he copies the plant and he's able to capture what the plant means and apply it to the blaster and create the plant blaster. Really, really awesome technology. I love the game interface. It's so cool. Look at that, the way it copies it. Augmented reality video games are going to be so cool in the future. AI is such crazy technology. So obviously this isn't anything that we can try out today. It's more of just a little demo by this company, Flat Pixel. But they do a lot of really cool AR technology stuff. Like they've got this Nickelodeon demo where it detects the actual physics of whatever, you know, object you're looking at through your AI camera. So yeah, the technology they're working on really, I think, is uh, interactive in a way that we've never seen before. So this seems like a really cool company. This one was a serious jaw dropper. And it's showing how Stable Diffusion, the text-to-image generation software, can quite literally read your mind when given the correct amount of hookups, let's say. So thanks to Dan Barridge for putting this on my Twitter feed. This is a real submitted paper. Essentially, fMRI scanners were attached to humans' heads doing an MRI scan of their current brain patterns, and then they were presented certain images on a screen. Essentially, Stable Diffusion was plugged into that fMRI scan output and tried to recreate what the fMRI scan saw. And viewers at home, take a good look at these outputs. They're pretty darn close to what the original image actually was, which means with the correct technology hooked up to your head in the near future, you're basically going to be able to record what your eyes are seeing in a really creepy and weird and incredible way. The teddy bear one is really astonishingly close. You can see the teddy bear has the bow. The actual general color of the teddy bear is also there, and the fact that it's like a flat white background. Again, this one, you can tell there was trees in the background. Not as good, but the general gist of the landscape is captured. The plane, you can tell that's a plane in the reconstructed image, I think. This one, clearly there's a human, definitely some sort of a snow sport going on, and a white background in general. And this one, obviously, is some sort of a building, possibly with a clock at the top of it. They're pretty close stuff. And again, this is the early stages of this technology. Think about what it's going to be a few papers down the line. As Two Minute Papers uh, always says on YouTube, things change very, very quickly. And pretty soon, you're going to be able to have a hookup that can essentially read your mind and see what you're seeing. So yeah, I'll link this paper down below. It's a really, really cool paper. It's just absolutely astonishing technology that we are seeing. Truly mind-blowing tech. 
Another one here from Heather Cooper. Not only do I recommend you guys follow my Discord server to stay up to date on AI tech, but you should follow my Twitter account because I retweet people like Heather Cooper that just are always showing the cutting edge of AI technology. This tech is very similar to what we've seen before, but I love the simple interface of this website that I'm going to link down below for you guys to try. You draw a simple sketch and it turns it into an image using stable diffusion. Apparently this one is better than the previous drawn to image technologies we've seen because it's using control net which I haven't really talked about much on the channel so far. A little demo here though, for example this one's a goofy owl. Click the go button and pretty quickly it's going to create an actual stable diffusion generated image. And I must say a very creative one at that. I really love the art style and the creativeness of this owl. Let's try it out for ourselves though. So obviously I drew a lemon character here, a cool lemon character with a lot of swagger, anthropomorphic lemon character wearing sunglasses, 3D render. Let's click go and see what we generate here. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Definitely a 3D render aspect to it, but um, yeah, that's a little terrifying, not gonna lie. Maybe some of these weird complex characters don't do as well with this. Hey, the lemon character prompt has always been a difficult one for AIs to accomplish, and that's why it's a good test. All right, this one's a little bit more simple. Photo of a lemon on a plate with the sun in the background. Mm, okay, a little bit more close here. It's definitely trying to follow the shapes of my incredibly crude and horrible drawings. It's doing an all right job for sure. I mean, if you're a good artist, this is going to be... This is going to be good. It's definitely good at generating nightmare fuel. It's actually very, very coherent, and that's definitely the control net poking in there. Um, but yeah, it's able to create these creepy demon flame creatures. This one was simply just close up photo eyeball. And honestly, this came out pretty good. Uh, this person definitely has like reptile skin though. So maybe this is like Mark Zuckerberg. That's probably what his eyeball looks like if you walk up to it and stare into it. Wow, this one actually came out really, really well for some reason. I did this incredibly horrible drawing of a steam train, and I simply did the prompt, photo of a steam train, 1800s, and it actually looks almost like a real photo. That's not a bad output. This website is a ton of fun to mess around with. It's completely free. For now, it generates pretty quickly, although we'll see after I post this video if this one gets a little bit clogged up with, you know, people from the video trying to use it. Um, yeah, you can definitely get good results the better of art you draw, essentially. It's, it's really really, really fun. Viewers, everything will be linked down in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this little journey into the newest and latest and greatest of AI art, technology, and research. Lately, I've been really trying to produce the videos that I want to create, so let me know if you like the video down in the comments below, and make sure you check out the Discord server. Lots of really great resources on the Discord server. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Like, subscribe, and all that jazz, and I'll see you next time.